In the midst of social distancing and business lockdowns, a freelance writer and a graphic artist bought a bus, converted it into a tiny home on wheels, and moved out of our four-bedroom house. One year later, we downsized to a Chevy Express. Now we travel between Texas and Pennsylvania from April through November while exploring small towns with rich histories. In the winter, we hunker down in Texas in our schoolie and dream of our next big trip. We're Alan and Teresa. And we're rolling with our Nomi. We're in Lee County, Texas, uh, Giddings, which is the county seat. And we're gonna walk around town. It's a small town, but it, it's beautiful. They've got a nice courthouse. We're gonna see what they got. And uh, so come along with us and uh, hope you enjoy the tour. All right, so we're looking at the Fletcher home. This is the Lee County Museum, uh, the Giddings Chamber of Commerce and Visitor Center. It's called the Fletcher home. It was built by August W. Schubert in 1879 and then bought by the Lutheran Church Missouri Synod in 1894 so that they could house a ministerial college. That closed uh, before 1900 and then it was sold to Bayless J. Fletcher who was the Lee County Treasurer and a legislator um, in the state of Texas evidently for this area. So it's a nice looking home. It's now the uh, Lee County Museum and Visitor Center here for Giddings. Pretty building. Yeah. So we're looking at the first Presbyterian church here in Giddings. It was organized in 1876 with 13 charter members and it is the oldest uh, church uh, still in operation here in Giddings. Oldest church building in Giddings in continuous use. In continuous use. Okay. Yes. Um, so cool. It's been uh, it's been uh, going since 1876, so a, a pretty long time. It is pretty neat. Okay. All right, so we are looking at the Lee County Courthouse. It's a beautiful building, uh, constructed in 1898, 1899. However, it is not the first courthouse in Lee County. And evidently not the most beautiful courthouse. The first one actually was more ornate and lavish. A little bit of history. Uh, Lee County was settled in the mid-1800s by the Windish Lutherans, who were Slavic pioneers. They came to Texas seeking religious and cultural liberty. They were uh, driven out of Europe by Prussian oppression which was dominated by Eastern European forces that insisted the winds abandon their native language and adopt German. They wanted to Germanize the windish names and join the evangelical reformed churches. So a group of about 600 windish left their Eastern European homeland in 1854 and came to Texas. A lot of them uh, caught the cholera, or yellow fever and ended up dying. But those that survived set up their homesteads here in Giddings and uh, surrounding Lee County. And so now that they had their independence here, uh, they fought real hard to establish their community, set up a county seat here uh, for Lee County, had a contested election in 1874, and by 1878, they had built their first courthouse here in Giddings, which was an ornate Second Empire style structure that rose two and a half stories and capped with mansard roofing and a tower. And it served the county until 1897 when officers at the courthouse noticed a fire in the attic. Oh no! Unable to quell the flames on the high floor with a water tank that topped out at a mere 20 feet, county officials began removing county records from the building before watching the courthouse burn to the ground. Hold on. It didn't take them long, however, to find an architect, J. Riley Gordon, who designed the new courthouse uh, and as well the San Antonio construction. He was from the San Antonio construction firm of 
Arizona Field, Emmons, and Albright. The building was completed in 1899 in the Romanesque Revival style, highlighting signature details of Gordon's familiar courthouse design. Evidently, he built several of them. The massive three-story red brick building rising from a limestone base and featuring rusticated stone arches, blue granite steps, and polished columns. The large stone arches are typical of the Romanesque Revival style that Gordon favored. The square brick clock tower rising from the center featured a distinct black and gold clock face design. So there's a lot of history here. I mean, I think it's a beautiful courthouse just the way it is. Yeah. Uh, better than some that we've seen. I think it's it's but a beautiful courthouse. Evidently, the one that was before it was even better. But uh, okay, well, I'll take know, their word for it. That that one's not. not it's a it's a pretty nice courthouse. So the Masonic Lodge here in Giddings uh, was established in 1865. It started in the community of Evergreen and relocated to Giddings in 1872 after the railroad bypassed Evergreen. The lodge has played an important part in the civic life of Giddings. Over the years, lodge facilities have been shared with public schools as well as a number of community organizations and government agencies. A lodge hall was built at this site in 1969 and 70 and continues to be an active part of the community. So we're looking at the back of Lee County Peanut Company. The metal buildings and barns are the back of the company, built around 1890. It started as cotton oil, but turned to peanuts in 1945. Lee County Peanut Company and its 20,000 acres of land throughout the county supplied peanuts to Disneyland in California and Panafina Peanut Butter among other companies. They were also declared kosher by a rabbi from Dallas who came down <laughs> specially to give them a blessing. Okay. Two to three thousand tons of peanuts were produced every year. But in 2010, the mill closed and its equipment was sold to a company in Africa for a peanut oil mill. In the front of the building, the logo of the Lee County Peanut right. Building. Oh, uh, William Longley was born in 1851, lived in the small town of Evergreen, just north of Giddings, and evidently came from a respectable family, but he had a hot temper and a fondness for liquor, and during the Reconstruction period, he uh, became one of the most daring gunslingers of the day. He killed his first man in 1868 at the age of 17 claiming to have killed 32 during his lifetime. The first time he was hanged was while cattle rustling, but the rancher, while making Longley dance as he hung, accidentally hit the rope instead of breaking it, and that allowed Bill to escape. Longley joined the U.S. Cavalry and deserted twice, but was captured in June of 1877. He was returned to Giddings, where he was tried and sentenced to death for murder. In the cemetery at the gallows, the hangman cut Bill some slack, literally, by making the rope too long. Bill fell to the ground. The situation was corrected immediately, and as they say, the third time is the charm. Hmm. So I guess they got him on the third time. But he repented and urged others to avoid his example. Now, his, his grave is now within the bounds of the cemetery, but as, as folklore has it, it was once outside. Interesting. All right, so we are at the site of three historic train depots here in Giddings. There's the long yellow uh, freight depot right here then there is the small freight depot which is right here you can see the train tracks 
and there's the side of the building and then the red brick passenger depot the small freight depot was built in 1890 the long freight depot in 1880 and the red brick passenger depot was built in 1920. They were established with the birth of the town in 1871 when the Texas and Houston Central Railroad laid its rails. The first passenger trains went from Waco to Yoakum. It was also around the 1960s when the depots quit being used. Now the Long Yellow Freight Depot is occupied by the Dime Box Distillery that's the long one here, which manufactures Sixth Street bourbon out of Austin, Texas. And uh, looks like they might give tours. This little, uh, or I should say big, granite rock is on display um, because this pink granite rock was used to build the Galveston Seawall, uh, which was started in 1902 and finished in 1904. The Houston and Texas Railroad was used to deliver that rock to Galveston, uh, transported from Granite Mountain in Burnett County through Gridding, through Giddings en route to Galveston. And so they've got this rock right here um, to demonstrate that it was, uh, you know, loaded, it passed through Giddings, and it was on the trains that, uh, that moved through the area. Uh, it was also used to build the state capital of Texas, and they've been on the railroad right-of-way in Giddings for all these years and put on display as of April 2005. There you go, folks. The small passenger depot the long freight depot and the short freight depot. So we're looking at the Knox home. It was one of the first homes in Giddings and the land it sits on is just one portion of a 2,682 acre tract given by the state of Texas to Jesse Barker in 1863 and went through many hands including those of Captain Rufus King, a Confederate veteran, before coming to W.A. Knox in 1878. After 20 years, it went to his nephew, John Knox, a county surveyor who lived there for 50 years. John and his twin brother, Robert, were known around town as the Knox brothers. On the day they were born, their older sister, Jo, was delighted to find that she had not one baby brother, but two. She asked her mama anxiously if they could keep both of them or if they would have to send one back. <laughs> the two brothers <laughs> were so close they even spoke in their own language and didn't learn English properly until they started first grade. The Knox family were longtime members of the Emanuel Lutheran Church. Rumors have it that after many years of young adulthood sitting on the hard wooden seats of the church, the brothers decided it was time for something more comfortable. The chairs were donated to the courthouse and pews were bought for the church sponsored by the Knox brothers. When they died, they had accumulated a lot of wealth from oil wells. That money was donated to the Texas Ranger Museum in Waco, Texas. Okay. All right, so this is the York House. Uh, the house of Dr. William Edward York, who was born in Evergreen in August of 1870 and graduated from Tulane University in 1894 with a medical degree. He married Annie Patton and had four children. With special training in dermatology, he bought the first x-ray machine in this part of Texas. He was known throughout Lee County as the baby doctor and delivered over 2,000 babies during his 55 years of practice. None of them were delivered in a hospital. He was the local physician of the Southern Pacific Railroad, member of J.D. Giddings Masonic Lodge, and on the board of the American Medical Association. 
He was the first person in Lee County to own a car, a 1909 white Buick ah. with no windshield or doors. <laughs> the horse and buggy he still kept around for rainy days. Right. Nice. So this neoclassical home was built around 1890. It was the home of Judge Ed R. Sinks, who moved to Giddings in 1875. The outside wood is cypress. The Sinks owned the whole city block at that time. And in addition to the house, a barn, a livery, and a surrey. His oldest daughter, Mina, was christened at the First United Methodist Church when it was still holding services in the school. He was the first district judge out of Lee County, a state representative for three years, and a charter member of the First National Bank, and also served as its president for 50 years, or, yeah, 50 years. But <laughs> his mother and father had statewide historical importance. His father was the first chief clerk of Post Office Bureau in Texas. His mother came from Ohio in 1840 and was a talented Texas chronicler who knew all the statewide officers, including Sam Houston, and wrote about them all. She was a founder of the Texas Historical Commission, which back then was questioned. <laughs> <laughs> and they, they actually lived in this house in their older years. Yeah. Should a woman be a member of such an organization was a big controversy at that time. Right. Rumors say that Julia owned an original order of Santa Ana signed directing his generals to leave Texas. Okay. Nice. Uh, okay, the Cherry House was, born, was belonged to William Henry Cherry and his wife Moody. They had seven children. William Henry was born in 1863 in Indiana and established himself as a successful merchant in Giddings, belonging to many organizations and clubs in town, including the Masonic Lodge, the National Railroad Adjustment Board, and the First United Methodist Church. Okay. We've seen it all here in Giddings, or at least a lot of it we saw. Uh, there are a lot of things that we didn't show. Uh, they've got a lot of murals in town that we didn't, uh, we didn't look at those or we didn't video those. Uh, we were mainly concerned with the historical buildings, but this is a cute little town, and they've got a lot going on. So, uh, hey, next time you're in these parts, check it out. Alright, if I don't do this right, then my wife's, I'm going to be on the bad side of my wife. So y'all bear with me and pray for me. But while you're doing that, don't forget, share us with your friends. Like us if you like us. Like us if you don't. Subscribe to the channel. It helps us out. God bless.